Olympics. Olympics without the crowds. Olympics without the money. I know. Well, it was. I would say. I would say Japan will host. Sorry. Did you watch any of the opening ceremonies yet this morning? No, not yet. Have you? Uh, just before I took my daughter to work, I was watching. It, it was so weird. Like they got you know this whole orchestrated choreographed thing going on, and then there's like empty seats <laughs> everywhere. It's just I don't know. I don't know how the performers get into it when you're performing for an empty stadium. Professionals, I would imagine. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's I, I, I reckon it's not the same, not nearly the same. You watch much Olympics? I yeah, I used to. I, I prefer the Winter Olympics uh, to the summer sport, but um, yeah, occasionally do. It's just summer has too much swimming and then too much running. Yeah. So. And, um, what do you what do you like about summer Olympics? Like what sports? Um, I like the the sprinting sports. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I've I've enjoyed watching swimming over the years just because of the Michael Phelps phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I think, and uh, and there's been some good Canadian stories, like Penny Olasiak is the female swimmer that's won a lot of medals. So, but uh, I like some of the other. I like uh, I like the other track and field sports. They, like I would never watch them outside of the Olympics, but like I I like watching um, javelin and hammer throw and all those kind of quirky, even weightlift, weightlifting, wrestling, gymnastics. I like watching. Um, yeah, you know what? It's funny because uh, I don't know how. Uh, I'm sure there's got to be logic behind it, but um, um, what do you call it? The selective nature of what is being shown to you. Yeah, it's not like it's not like they show everything. It's what yeah. do you get to watch on the U.S. and the Canadian networks? I was surprised when I started at Pressima and I was with the USF guys, like Adam and, uh, uh, I don't know, anyway, all the, all the guys that were down in that office and, and asking them about the Olympics. Because I, I just assumed because of America is so dominant yep. in the Olympics that they would all be into it. And they were like, yeah, we don't even watch it. <laughs> It's like they just take it for granted that they're going to win their whatever 40 gold medals every year. And whereas, you know, here in Canada, we're like, you know, please let us win at least one gold. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But same with the, the, the folks in Chicago. Like when I first started Chicago Blackhawk, they just won the Stanley Cup either for the first time or the second time in three years or something. Yeah. And I, oh, that must have been amazing. That, you know, and they're like, oh, we don't watch hockey. What? Yeah. And I'm like, I know, but like even people who don't watch hockey, like when your team is winning the championship, you tend to get sucked into the celebration of it. But no. Anyway, it was just reminded me of how big America is versus Canada that, you know. It's true. I mean, yeah. they're they're letting in like the equivalent of like the population of our largest city across the border, like every two weeks. So <laughs> That's yeah. What what is it with that? I, I I wasn't I wasn't really closely following it, but uh, from what I understand, I mean, I need to go to Mexico and then yeah. If you want to get into the states, you got to go to Mexico and come. Yeah. Out. yeah. Exactly. Which is strange. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder: I'm off next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, camping. Good stuff. Where, which, which campsite are they going to? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock, Rockwood Constitution, yep. yeah. Yeah, did not need to ask. No. It's, uh, it's, I was talking to somebody yesterday just saying, they're like, why do you go there? I'm like, well, because it's only 40 minutes away. And if, the, if it rains or, you know, whatever, you can just come home and leave all your stuff there. Like, we've done that before where you wake up, like, Saturday morning, it's pouring rain. And you're like, screw that. And we just come home for the day. And then when the rain stops in the afternoon, you go back up. <laughs> in a way, that's incredibly smart. Yeah. So. It kind of defeats the purpose of camping, but it's incredibly smart from a convenience standpoint. Yeah. 
Well, and then when you you pack up and you come home, you're not sitting in traffic for three or four hours. Yeah, that too. So that too. And I, I don't know the way I look at it. Once you're in the canopy of the the woods, whether you're in the woods forty minutes from here or in the woods four hours from here, it feels the same. Sure. Yeah. Anyway. Oh uh, well. So this uh, interesting week is coming to a close. Yes. I'm actually going to see uh, Romanus today. Are you? Yeah. Apparently, our wives got um, have a different social life beyond beyond us. Yeah. And today there's lunch that's been booked. Mm. So we're driving out to Burlington. Very nice. Yeah. So any anything you want me to tell John? Yeah. Buy the story time app. Damn it. <laughs> Exactly. You have two kids. You have no excuse. Mm. I think you can afford the five bucks. Yeah. Oh, thank you, camera. Thank you. I'm right here. Yeah. Right here. It's very quick to react to, like, when you go close to it. But then when you go back far away, it, it's, uh, it's not. What is so going good. on? Okay, you can see my hand. Then zoom, zoom, zoom. Good. Um, you better put a new camera on your Christmas list. Yeah, I'm looking at all of my equipment that I have set up, and um, something doesn't add up in my head. Yeah. How so? The utilize underutilization of your infrastructure. Uh, that's uh, that's a very elegant way of putting it. Yes, that's a very elegant way of putting it. Did you um, did you figure out what was wrong with your site yesterday? Uh, yes, apparently one of the plugins was updating, crapped out in the middle, and then crashed the whole thing. Oh. Two hours later, figured it out. Oh no, four hours later, figured it out. It's you uh, you set yourself up for that one the other day when you said, oh, I, I love technology. <laughs> I know. Uh, but it also it also kind of um, it also provided a beautiful illustration. I recall you and I were talking about uh, Amy wanting to do uh, native apps. Yeah. Those infrastructures, like those phones, keep updating every single year. Sometimes even multiple times, yeah. Yeah, multiple times a year, and you need to stay up with that because if you don't, yeah. so it's essentially the cost of creating an app is probably dwarfed by the cost of maintenance of that app. Yeah. So it's in, it, it, it's it's interesting how that works. Well, I think I was saying like when we were building our thing at Presima, it's like we were only into it for a few weeks and the programmers like, oh, we got to spend a few days this week updating everything that we've already done to the new version of Angular. And then and you're like, what? And then next thing you know, ClickSense, oh, there's a new version of ClickSense. We need to upgrade that. And you're like, what? Like you're, we haven't even done anything yet and we're already falling behind. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very frustrating. It is. It's, it's terribly frustrating. And uh, you know it's not going to stop. You know it's, it's just going to continue. Yeah. And then you, get, you look at the, uh, the console on your web browser, and there's all this red code saying, you know, this feature is no longer supported. This feature is no longer supported. You're like, sons of bitches. <laughs> Anyways. It's like they're colluding. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Exactly. So that's their business model, essentially. Yeah. Stay one step ahead. All in the under the guise of progress. That's why it's funny. Like we used to complain at Loblaws, like, oh, yo, whatever. We're still on, you know, Office two thousand, and it's you know two thousand and ten. But it's like the cost the cost to update everything is enormous. Okay. Here's a question, which I've been, which I've been struggling with this week. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Okay. What are you gonna do? I'll simplify that question. Um, well, come on. 
my immediate plan is I've, I've got, I had a call yesterday back from that manufacturing company. So. Oh, you it, did. It's, uh, and? Is it's it a go? Still alive. It's not a go yet, but um, he had a few questions for me and then he's got to go back and figure some things out and then he's got to sell it internally. And then um, it was funny because like I, I mapped it out over six weeks with like a $30,000 price tag on it. Mm-hmm. And one of his questions was, what if it takes longer than this? Um, which is a valid question. So, so, I mean, that's, you know, there's some wiggle room in there if, if we go over the timeline without having to charge more, but at some point too, you, you know, if, if it ends up being twice as long, you know, yep. you can't do that twice the time for free. Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, you don't know what you don't know. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see where it goes. I, it was, it was a positive call and, um, he's going to get back in touch with me next week when I'm back from vacation or the, or the early the following week. So that's still on the, the burner. I've got a date set for my leadership for retail managers launch with Joanne's team on August, the week of August 4th. So that's, uh, and that runs for eight weeks, um, which is only my commitment really is I got to deliver a one hour Zoom call every week for those eight weeks. Uh, other than that, the program's already built. And I'm relaunching my some of my other stuff for the beginning of August, hopefully. Repackaged, re new pricing model. Anyway back to school <laughs> theme. So that's my plan. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible because I remember when you were launching leadership for teens as a Christmas person. Christmas pro, yeah, I know. Yeah. And, and on top of that, I, I'm still trying to, to grow the coaching side of things. So trying to yeah. connect with various people. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm still trying to sell story time. Yeah. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm in love with our new commercials, so. Your commercials are great. Commercials are absolutely fantastic. Mm. I was reading, because I, I, I'm reading a, um, This Will Never Work, the story of Netflix. Yeah. As told by, not by, um, not by, what's it called? What's his name? Reed. Not, not the existing CEO, but the founding guy who's like, who had the idea, jumped into this and uh, then just left because the company changed and, and like the company changed, the company grew up and yeah. uh, he was not the person to lead it. Yeah. And uh, he talks about that in the book as well. But I'm reading the book and so they, um, they had a couple of, experiences launching things under their belt and then they found money so they got money before they built anything just on the idea that people will want to rent movies by mail yeah and a year and a half they spent building it inking contracts with like sony and toshiba which were bloody expensive and didn't yield any positive revenue for them yeah. But got the word out. The thing that um, it's interesting when you read those books because you know those are success stories. That's why you read them. Yeah. But it's kind of like how like how did you stumble on this idea? Yeah. How did you not quit? <laughs> well, it's not even so much about quitting. It's just um, like look. We had a couple of ideas that uh, I, I was sure, I believe like wholeheartedly will um, would work, and they still might, they still might. But um, at the same time, I'm feeling that the message. Oh shit! It's almost like I want to take my whole. Uh, day or a week decompose into little segments and i'm not a good example because i'm sitting at home really yeah and not working but decompose and then just just see what people do yeah because uh 
one of the things that we recall uh, we were asking ourselves uh, when when story time kind of the original uh, promotion flopped is like is there a problem are we solving a problem is the product a good idea definitely but is it solving a acute problem yeah are people googling for it yeah i don't know well here i'm going to put something to the test this weekend because i'm going to my brothers on sunday Mm -hmm. they, they just moved into the new place and they got a pool and stuff anyway i'm making them buy the app while i'm there and i'm going to make my wife and myself and my kids record some stories for the twins. So mm-hmm. I, I'm going to basically, while I'm there over the course of four or five hours, force them to set up the app and, and put content on it for us because we don't see the kids very often. And then we'll see, um, and I'll, I'll show the twins kind of how, how it works, whatever. And then we'll see once we leave over the course of the next week, do they ask to, to get stories from Unky or from Veronica or from Ian or whatever? So hmm. we'll see. And I'm going to record, I'm going to try and record some footage with them kind of as all doing it. So it's kind of my, my secret uh, agenda for our visit. <laughs> <laughs> just remember that all you need to do is um, just to make sure that you know your email with which he's inviting you, Veronica, Ian, like whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because the um, the um, welcome email will not trigger. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So that's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I keep going thinking about, because when we had that conversation before about solving a problem, and I don't, yeah. it's not that I don't believe in that, but I don't, I don't think it's as um, binary as, the only way to have a successful idea is to be solving a problem in, in that context, because you think of, you know, innovation anyway, not that it doesn't solve a problem, but it, it, it it's not things that people are even thinking about. Right. It's. Uh, well, that would be ideal. It would be ideal if you can improve something that people, like you said, are not thinking about. And yet, it's, um, I keep, in the same vein as you were going, it, it's kind of like the initial iPod. Yeah. You had Walkmans, you had tapes. I mean, there was no problem. You could buy as many tapes as you want. Yeah. The thing that he put in front of people is the ability to carry all of those songs in this little device. Yeah. Heavy, but uh, still this little device. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, the other, the in, other interesting aspect to that, whether it's the iPod or the the Walkman in general, is just the the fear at the time that it was going to be the death of radio. Yeah. Yet radio has survived, which is interesting when you think of the context of all kinds of other stuff, like DVDs industry has basically vanished. Um, yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. Yeah, radio is a medium survived. But radio, radio survived, um, you know, uh, vinyl records kind of died, but is, is made a bit of a resurgence. Um, it's a very niche resurgence, but you know, th- there's still something there mm-hmm. in that, in that form. So it's, I don't know, th- those are kind of interesting case studies, uh, to look at. I mean, I think, you know, for story time in particular, like, you know, I don't know if it's so much a problem as, and that it's getting in the way of people's lives, but it's an opportunity and that, you know, the testing and just our own thinking about the app, like there's definitely a use case for it in a, in a place for it, for people to, to benefit from it. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to bed at night going, Oh, I wish I had this thing that could just like read the story for me. <laughs> what services do you know? Because there's, there's something that just, um, uh popped in my head recall that story time had two twin brothers sisters whatever yeah. siblings which we we've never tackled those two no well the legacy app is that what you mean well the legacy and the uh um, like the let's say home care app 
Yeah, the seniors version. Seniors version, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think our notionally we were like, we'll get onto those once story time does something. Um, but it's not to say. I mean, I, you know, it's funny because the the seniors app, some version of it, I think is uh, like, I did a thing for my. Uh, for my dad, I built him an app. I think I showed it to you. Yes. <clears throat> before, but one of the things like I, I put on there, I basically built a web page on my site where I'm putting all of the, the videos that I do. So I do a video every Mother's Day for my wife. I did a video for my daughter's 16th birthday. I just did yep. one for my son's birthday. I did one for our anniversary. I did one for the, my mom's birthday, would have been her 75th birthday this year. So it was like a in memory, memory video. But I just I put them on there, and my dad's got a. It's basically it's just a link to that page on his app. But like I can like this week I just was talking to him. I said, "Oh, I put a new video up," and he's probably watched it ten times already. <laughs> and it's not like you couldn't. I mean, YouTube or other services could satisfy that itch, but it's it's something to do with the way it's organizing things a certain way. I don't know. Um, but there's, there's definitely things like my dad, one, another app I built him, which he never ended up using. He, he was complaining all the time once he moved into the retirement home that he didn't know who anyone was that worked there. He couldn't remember their names or what their positions were. And he, uh -huh. he kept telling me he wants them to provide him with an org chart. And I'm like, they don't do that. <laughs> but I told, I built him an app that said, look, look, when you interact with somebody, ask them if you can take their picture and then you can put their name in, in their position. And it was basically just a, like a directory yeah. app and he never used it because I think he, a he didn't, he didn't remember to use it, but also he, he was, I don't know, shy about asking people to do it or whatever, but there's, there's a all kind a whole list of things for people that are in retirement homes. And I mean, fuck, if my dad can use an iPhone, anyone can use an iPhone. Like, and, you know, especially through the pandemic, I think seniors all have more technology than you would, you would typically think. Aging population. I mean, that's a, a good, uh, a good segment to go after. Yes, it is. So to the point that I wanted to make is it's it's not it's not to say that if this didn't work, the other one didn't wouldn't work as well. Yeah. We just had we had just had an in with Amy yeah. into that uh, demographic, or so we thought. Yeah. We're scheduled to go over to their place the second weekend in August or something. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna re use that opportunity to reestablish that line of communication. Yeah. Um, Interesting. And I'll take her her to me that we are. <laughs> uh, well, so here's the question, what are you gonna do? That is the million dollar question that I am trying to answer for myself. And uh, hence I was asking you because I was, I was hoping that um, I'm coming, I'm coming face to face with the realization that I don't really know how to sell well yeah. into the, into the abyss of people that I do not know. Yeah. And um I feel I feel like I want to do a lot a lot of stuff. Like I said, um, just helping people out with the 
things that scare them the most, i.e. technology yeah. and simplifying some of the stuff that they do. But then the question is, is so what is, what is that exactly? Yeah. I was watching, I was watching yesterday. Um, we were talking about Excel, I think, right? Or yeah. somehow Excel came up. So I was Googling some of the videos on YouTube and there are plenty of videos of people doing how you do this in Excel, that in Excel, which I fully recognize is for the most part is only watched by those who actually like Excel and like working in Excel. But at the same time, I've also noticed that um, like dashboards, simple, simple example. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of videos of how to build a dashboard in Excel there, I haven't found a video that talks about what is a good dashboard. Yeah. Like, how do you determine the dashboard based on the seniority of the audience that you uh, work with? But then I thought to myself, okay, I can definitely do a video on that and it would be a good video. I would have examples of what a good dashboard is. Yeah. Um, would putting it on YouTube make any difference? In other words, why do some people who do Excel videos get 1.1 million views and others get none? Yeah. That I do not know. Probably shouldn't worry about it. Just, just like it, it, there's part of me that says, just do it. And there's, there's no reason not to. Yeah. Um, but then how do you turn that into a business? I was also thinking about uh, looking at freelancing and more of a freelancing uh, from a standpoint of um, finding, um, finding a business niche uh, out of exploring people's needs. Mm -hmm. Because realistically, you and I can sit, sit around here and wreck our brains all day long, but we might not be coming head to head with some of the real stuff that people are trying to solve, yeah. which you and I would be awesome for. Yeah. And I'm using I'm using you and I. It's just because two people can achieve substantially more than one yeah. in, in in a shorter time frame. Like for example, even even what you what you've done with the uh, promotional video. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time on the app, but you spent a lot of time on promotions. Yeah. Without uh, anyway, but the point being the point being there's. Um, It's like, I, I feel like um, I'm sitting here. I have skills, I have very strong skills in certain areas. Yeah. And, I can, and I can do some things better than anyone else can do. But, but who knows about that? Yeah. No one. <laughs> no one really knows about that. And how do I make myself know? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm struggling. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll, I'm, I'm struggling with that a bit. I was even thinking about, I got uh, like a 75% off Udacity uh, coupons, like thinking of doing some uh, small nano degrees. Yeah. I'm not entirely certain what that would uh, yield. Yeah. Uh, there's, well, I mean, there, there's a portion of me that says like, look, okay, so this year I'm going to be 44. There's 21 years till official retirement, right? Yeah. It's a long time. Like if you subtract 21 years from 44, you end up with 23. That's just when I came to Canada. Yeah. I wasn't working really. I didn't have a career. I didn't even have an inclination of thinking about what a career might look like. Yeah. So that's, I'm here um, within 21 years. I can be anywhere in another 21 years. Yeah. And uh, it's always difficult when you have a steady job to make that decision because, uh, I mean, you would have to forego your existing level of income. Yeah. Not the case in my uh, world. And yeah. There's nothing to forego. Yeah. I mean, I, I was even thinking about uh, going out and um, taking like woodworking courses. Yeah. You do something with your hands. I mean, it's, um, that's, it, it's more unique than putting out YouTube videos. Anyway, uh, does that does does anything in that rant make sense to you? Or do you have any feedback, Mister Coach? Yeah, well, I mean, um, I'm in the camp of something's better than nothing. So, you know, 
even if you're in a in a a realm of not knowing exactly what it is that you want to do yeah make, make sure that whether it's every day or every week that you do something right so it's uh I think one of the, one of the best things I, I did was I forced myself to do my Thursday thought video every week. <clears throat> it's like some of them are better than others or whatever, but I still do one every week. And because um, you, you'd be surprised how much content you end up having. Like, you know, if you do one a week, like in three weeks, you'll have three and then in six weeks, you'll have six. And so on. next thing you know, it's like, holy crap, I got a lot of content and you can utilize that in different ways plus you're just you're putting your toe in right so i want to try this or i want to try that and it's uh i don't know i i, I keep going back to the whole notion of people got to know you like you and trust you and the way that they you establish that is you got to give them as many touch points with seeing who you are what you're doing what you're talking about even if you're all over the place like i'm you know, I don't know. I, I'm not convinced for myself if me being all over the place is a good thing or a bad thing yet. Um, but it's it's who I am. So I, I think fundamentally it's a good thing um, for me. Um, so, you know, for you, it's, it's I'd say, you know, just try to do create something every week is a starting point, what that is, or how, it may take different forms. Um, who knows it like you're, you're, it's act. It's like come, come when you come up with your ideas. Um, so the, the, uh, in the Jamie's book results, he's got a formula. It says insights plus action equals results. So the, uh, you know, you gotta, you come up with an idea, like you just said, like, you know, maybe I should talk to people and find out what their actual problems are. Sounds like a good good plan. So go talk to somebody. <laughs> and you know what? I, I know you're going for a social thing with Romanis today, but it's like, you know, as part of the conversation, like, you know, what kind of things are you guys are you dealing with in your in the coffee business? Um, do you know anybody? Does his wife know anybody that's, you know, is because it's what we talked about yesterday, like the the connections of our connections is kind of where a big opportunity maybe hiding in terms of finding that's, that's good advice people to connect with that's solid advice solid advice so simple mm. you earned your coach badge today oh thank you definitely earned your coach badge it's also it's also it's also amazing to me that uh it's so simple uh so seemingly straightforward and yet i haven't thought about that yeah yeah well, the, the, I don't know, one of the things I keep thinking about is, it, and this has been a theme, I think, in a lot of my career, the whole less is more kind of thing, that we, we tend to overcomplicate things and we add things on and I got to do this, I got to do this. And really, it, it is much more simple than we think it is. And I think a, a lot of the complexity that we we add on is like, the rooted in the fear of acting and I don't know if it's so much consciously a fear of failing or, or looking weird or stupid or I don't know, whatever those underlying feelings yeah. that everyone has, but it's just, I don't know. The more I get, you know, Jamie uses the word grounded, the more you get grounded, the more it frees you up just to do things and see what happens. It's like, so Nick, he, he uses the word experiment a lot too. Like it, everything you just, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like doing this. I'm just going to experiment with it a little, Put send out a one line email to people, send out a, I don't know, whatever. And see what happens. And then, yep. and then it, it's the, the driving in the fog, right? Like, I don't know where I'm going, I, but I know I'm going from here to, to where I can see, which is just like five feet that way. And then when I get there, I'll figure out where I'm going for the next five feet. But do like, you know, again, something is always better than nothing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
it just say, I don't know, I'm just, this is just coming to my head, but like even a video of like, hey, uh, fellow entrepreneurs, like I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing right now. <laughs> um, like it just, there's a, an authenticity and like it, that'll resonate with people, right? Because people are like, whatever you and I are going through, you can guarantee there's tens of thousands of people out there doing the same thing. Hold on. What you just said, but that, that makes sense. So where, uh, where on the internet can I find all of the, so if I type in entrepreneurial, oh, okay, screw it. Uh, new business ideas. What comes up? Startup trends. Hmm. Best small business ideas. Get get what guess what number two is. What's that? Woodworker. <laughs> Kid you not. Do you do woodworking or you're just interested in doing woodworking? I well, I used to, I used to do it in school. Not not like not even professionally, not even understanding. It's just I, I just liked it. Yeah. I just uh, like working with wood. I understand it. Um 21 great small business ideas to start in 2001. Consultant. Oh, wow. No way. Online reseller. Actually, yeah, that, that's a good one. Online teaching. Online teaching, yes. Online bookkeeping. Medical career services. App developer. Transcription service. Professional organizer. Cleaning service. Freelance copywriter. Home care service. Translation service. Digital marketing. Food truck. That one we haven't tried before. <laughs> I feel like everything else we've tried. The good old food truck. Hey, um, I, I talked to, yeah, so, sorry, we talked about uh, real estate. You don't have your real estate license, right? No, not anymore. Yeah. But if you want to get a real estate license, you can have it in like six months. Six months is a long time. Six months is a long time. Well, the, not to the, say the reason it takes that long is because you 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 can't sign up. At least I don't know how it works now, but when I did it, there's I think there was three stages you have to go through. Yep. So the the first two are fully online. Yep. And then the third one is a is a one week like forty hours in class in person. Mm -hmm. I'm sure during COVID they've changed it, but um, and I, when I did mine, like you can't sign up for the next stage until you've completed and got your mark for the previous stage. Yep. So that like if, if you could just sign up and right on day one you'd be way ahead of the curve it's just by the time you finish stage two and then you go to sign up for stage three the dates are far like i ended i drove to niagara falls every day to do mine because it was a the fastest the most the earliest available course otherwise Jesus i would have had to Christ. wait like another two months to go to one in mississauga um and then you can start practicing but it's i don't know it's an interesting business I was thinking about CRM for um, real estate agents. Yeah, I have a bunch of real estate agents I tap into and just ask them questions as to how things are being done. Like when I when I worked the broker I worked for, he had a partnership or a deal or whatever with this lady, and she was an older lady, but it was like um, for an extra whatever fee, fifty dollars a month or something, when you joined his brokerage, you could get your website with her. And it was basically just a, a template or whatever. And it had a bunch of different things, but it was, I don't know. It was a, it was a, the path of least resistance at the time, but it wasn't very good. Um, I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff, services that realtors do and use and whatever, but they, because of that, there's lots of competition and there's lots of the brokers kind of, I think the broker gets a cut. So when they, you know, it's like an affiliate marketing thing. 
Yeah. So that they partner with somebody who provides a service, um, et cetera, et cetera. But it'd be interesting to know because I mean, I haven't been in that business in a long time, but um, the migration of all that stuff to mobile, whether that's happened, I mean, that might be, uh, I mean, I, that, that's another app that I have on, the, on my back burner that I want to create to support my real estate business was turning all my checklists and uh, and things into a, a, a mobile app that's easy yep. to use. Like the, the one is for when, when you go to look at houses that you would go in and you would take a picture outside the house, take a picture of each room and you would, you and your wife say would rate each room, mm -hmm. each on your own phone, red, yellow, or green, or give it a number between one and 10. I don't know, however you do it. Very easy, like a little slide or whatever. And then at the end, you go see five or six houses in one day and you can go back and then you get a report off the app that gives you a comparison of how you rated the properties to help you uh, make decisions. I wonder. Does South Sigma have an API? Yeah, like there's all kinds of new, uh, like outside of MLS or uh, uh, realtor.ca, there's all kinds of other sites. I use House Sigma all the time. Yeah, there's one, a uh, House Zoom or something that somebody was showing me the other day. I think that's what it's called. Um, there's other ones, like a lot of them, they, you know, they, they integrate other data like the school system in, in the neighborhood, the yes. demographics. We used to do that at RBC. Like oh, my team yes. used to like build some of that out. Yeah. Like the total cost of ownership. Yeah. I know, I mean, this is off topic, but I went to a, a, an award ceremony a couple of years ago with my wife. She was getting uh, an award from the Life Saving Society for some volunteer work she did through her lifeguarding, aquatic stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there was two guys there who run a training program basically for, for security guards. They won like every freaking award there was like, because they, they, they have this, it seemed to me like they have a monopoly on first aid training or uh, life saving kind of training, whatever it is for that whole industry. So if you think about it, like every person that works security has to have a certain, you know, they have to have, be first aid training, they have to be whatever. Yeah. And these guys provide that service and they, they were winning the awards for like the most certifications handed out in, in the year. And they were like, they were up against institutions like universities and things. So it's like, you know, Queens University came in second with 40,000. These guys came in at 89,000. Like it's like, it wasn't even like close. <laughs> and I, I said to, to Beth, I go like, is, does he have any competition? Like, it seemed to me like they just had cornered the market. But I, I just thought of that because of like that post I showed yesterday with that person do like financial literacy for non-English speaking people, um, whatever it was. I don't know, there's all these little niches out there, but to your point, like what, what makes one of them, like there's lots of options out there. One of them gets one view a week and another one gets a million views a week. What is the difference? That's true. Interesting. Uh, social media for, uh, yeah, there's so many things for realtors. Real estate marketing agency for top agents. Asterix marketing, real estate digital marketing. Mm -hmm. 
What if we pay people? Okay, doesn't that? Doesn't matter. I'm just thinking of um, what do we encounter um, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis that um, that is mildly important that we pay attention to. I mean, not something like getting food. Like that's that's Instacart or in a in a buggy have done that. Yeah. It's um, what, what puzzles me is that all ideas cannot be taken. It's just. Yeah, but even if they're taken, I mean, I, I, I remember when we first started and we were like using the uh, those Google analytics or keywords or whatever things. And it was like you actually wanted to get into something that had a high. Yes, high number. Like so yeah. it, it wasn't about finding a unique idea that no one else is doing. Um, hmm. I mean, that, that's, like I said, there, there's many ways to skin a cat, but um, hmm. okay, we're not get, getting anywhere with this, but um, so here's, here's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, I'm going to be writing down ideas. And then see what comes up because. Yeah. Give yourself a time block, whatever, 60 minutes to write down a list of ideas. Yeah. And then pick one. And then give yourself a time block to, to figure out what experiment you want to do around it. Do a video, do a post, phone somebody, I don't know, whatever, and then do it. It doesn't have to be a great idea. It just has to be an idea. It's good advice. Good advice. Let me, let me jot this down. Something is better than nothing every time. <laughs> time block for ideas. So I'll be back on Thursday. So if you want to do, um, I guess we're on your Zoom next Thursday. So. Yeah, we are on my Zoom. Let me see if I, if I need to make any additions. Any, oh, additions or changes. So next week, here we go. So mine's the... Pink one, delete this event, yep. Okay, one of the things, I didn't mention this earlier, but um, I, I don't know if you noticed on my post on the new managers Facebook group, I put, uh, I, I mentioned that I'll be announcing something mm -hmm. in the future. So I, I don't really know exactly what gonna, I'm gonna announce, but other than notionally, I'm gonna turn what I already did into some kind of a course mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask, I'm going to basically announce that I'm launching a, a program, a pilot program. I'd like people to participate in. I'm looking for six to 10 people um, to join. It's going to be, I don't know, a price might be 1999, 29, I don't know, just something. So that at least people have some kind of skin in the game. Yep. And uh, it's going to be, a pilot program for building a, a course around it and then using using the content that I already created plus I'll record all the sessions that I have in that course with people and use that as content as well and then so coming out of that it'll it'll be a four or six week course or something and then I'll have a, another program to 
to sell and hopefully testimonies if I can find, you know, hopefully people in the group that are already in there join mm -hmm. and, and maybe they, they recruit some other people who knows, but that's, that's kind of the, the other thing that I got going to happen in August, I guess. That's a, that's a very good idea. It's the best way of getting content. Yeah. And then, and, and part of that too, is it's the, the, uh, the research aspect of what is it that, that is, the biggest challenges for people as new managers. Like I got an idea and I've been addressing some of them, but you know, again, like I, I already did some research, but mm -hmm. in that context, I think it'll be cool to have like a group conversation on zoom where people are kind of building off of each other's ideas and relating to each other. That would be a good idea. Yeah. I think. And so this is for new managers, eh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, like what, what I kind of envision, hopefully at some point is, um, you know, having a program that has some substance to it that you can then go and sell it into small and medium sized businesses. Mm -hmm. And it becomes part of their onboarding or standard training for people who get promoted into new management positions and it's yeah, like, kind of like a part, portion of their HR service. Yeah, exactly. It's an interesting idea. All right, man. This All is right. Be, be, this is this is this is starting to beating a dead, dead horse right now. <laughs> too, too many awkward silences. All right. Okay. Well, that, means that means you're thinking. Trip. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to you on Thursday, July the 29th. I'll live. All right. We'll see you then. Okay. okay bye.